Um, great to have you here. Uh, Nick Howe, I work for NetWest, I uh, do a role as Enterprise Manager, and effectively what that means is working with the business uh, support organisations out there in the community that people go to for some element of business support, whether it's a start-up, whether it's actually growing the business. Uh, increasingly, there's a lot of different organisations out there, uh, and one of the things we want to do is try and contribute and support that. One of the other things I want to sort of try and break down is that I know that the prospect of coming into the bank, actually a lot of you would rather go to the dentist. Am I right? <laughs> and we want to try and change that. We want to try and ensure that people are aware that informally we love to chat around your ideas, your passions, your business model that you're like looking to try and get to. We have a lot of help that we can provide you with. But equally, we are really well connected and we want to try and support you with that also. So the whole idea of my session uh, this afternoon is just to try and go through some of the best ways of taking a business if you are intending to make a start. And actually, it's not something that I've delivered. It's not something that head office has delivered. Most importantly, this is information we've gathered from business owners. Business owners who have been there before you, business owners who have shared their tips, what they would tell their younger selves with you as that next generation coming through. And we hope that as a process of, of sharing that with you, it helps uh, make it easier for you. Now, whether you are here today to pursue your business idea, or whether it's more around your own mindset, whether it's around growing yourself personally, I think the quote behind me is relevant to us all. It's a, a great man, Roald Dahl, um, and you can read the quote for yourself, but I began to realise how important it was to be an enthusiast in life. If you're in, interested in, in something, no matter what it is, go at it at full speed, embrace it, <coughs> with both arms, hug it, love it, and above all, become passionate about it. Lukewarm is no good. So whatever it is that you have come here today to try and, try and change, to try and make a start about building for yourself, just try and bear that in mind. So much about what is possible is about yourself. And so much about how you can get other people alongside and supporting you is about how passionate you are about the idea that you're um, setting out on. So passion is, is absolutely a good thing. So we've got an idea. We are perhaps thinking about starting a business. The way that the system is set up here in the UK means that it's absolutely possible, you know, if you jumped on your smartphone right now, you could register that business and for most sectors, you would be able to start trading. Now, if that's the only idea that you've had so far, it's the only kind of research that you've done, it's the only thought you've had about that idea, the likelihood of that business surviving, I would suggest is very, very low. What we want to encourage is for people, by all means, to have great ideas, great businesses, but don't launch it as the very next step. We will go through the recommended stages with you in terms of how you should consider moving that idea further forward. The current statistics suggest, at the moment, that four in 10 businesses that start make it to the start of year three. So that is a stark statistic, four in 10 make it to the start of year three. So we want to encourage people to start a business, but most importantly, we want them to be long lasting. Okay? So the very first thing, what do you think we should consider? If we've got an idea, we've got a sector, we've got a market that we would like to start a business in, what do you think the very first thing ought to be that we consider? Any ideas? The competition. Competition, okay. Anything, any other thoughts? Very first thing we think about. Market research. Market research, okay. My suggestion would be, they would come slightly later on, the very first thing to think about is you. You can have the best idea in the world, but if you're not the right person to drive that idea, the likelihood of that surviving and, and, and thriving is actually going to be limited. Okay? And equally, I think 
being an entrepreneur, that seems to be the buzzword at the moment. In, in my sort of uh, growing up years, if, if I was a footballer or a DJ, that was kind of the industry you wanted to get into. And I think being an entrepreneur is a little bit of a buzzword at, at the moment. But it's not the right thing for everyone. We work with lots of business owners who kind of really delicately weigh up the pros and cons of running your own business. A couple of uh, things to share with you. Number one is the time that you are committing to this business idea. If you are committing time, particularly in those early stages, who else does that directly have an impact on? You? Yeah, who else? Your family, your nearest and dearest. So the question number one for you is how supportive and understanding is my nearest and dearest? What you want, you want them on your team. You want them on side, cheering you on, encouraging you. What you don't want is for them moaning because you've got to work late that evening because there's a big event that you've got to be at. Okay? So understanding that you've got your family support, the nearest and dearest network around you, hugely important. Another thing that business owners share with us is actually how lonely it could be. Loneliness is a big issue, particularly for small businesses that set up today. But if you're aware of it, there are some things that you can do about it. Okay? So number one, just like today, I would suggest that you are in an audience of like-minded people. Okay? So wherever you can go, whether it's a formal network in a group, whether it's kind of networks, whether it's the local area where you're based, wherever you can go to meet like-minded people, grab it with both chances and both hands. Um, Massive opportunity to kind of chew the fact, see what they've done to overcome a problem or a change in legislation, whatever. Having an outlet. And I think the second aspect to not being quite so lonely is have a mentor or a sounding board. Now, I don't know who this person is because we're all different and we kind of all buy into different individuals. But having a mentor or a sounding board as you grow the business is going to be really important. It's that sort of relationship where, yes, you're having conversations with customers or suppliers, and yes, there is the kind of physical interaction, but the opportunity to kind of pick the phone up to someone where you can let them know absolutely everything about worries, anxieties, issues that you're having is hugely important. So, surround yourself with like-minded people and have uh, awareness of who your mentor or your sound board is likely to be. Hugely important. So given the negative, and, and there are a few more actually, given the negatives, why on earth would you start your own business? Number one, I've mentioned it already, and good old Roald Dahl has mentioned it. The words, the P words, type of fruit. It's not pomegranate or papaya, uh, pineapple or papaya, it's passion. If you can, for the bulk of the week, do something that you are passionate about, something you love and enjoy, what a great way to earn a living, okay? Um, you're not going to be able to do it all the time because there'll be the returns that you might need to do, there's the contracts that you might need to enter into, but if you can do 70% of the week doing something you love doing, what a great way to earn a living. Flexibility is incredibly important for people today as well. No one said running your own business has to be done 9 to 5, and increasingly we live in a 24-7 uh, society. So the fact that you can fit in this business when you choose to, in conjunction with your customers, is a massive positive for people. So I think there's a huge amount of benefit in terms of understanding what drives you on. And I think the objective, the goal that you're aiming for is important as well. I know that's been touched on before. So what is motivating you? Uh, we've got businesses and business owners who are motivated by the, the financial aspect and the money side, and that's how they kind of chart the newer car, the bigger house, or whatever. and that's, that's the right thing for them. But equally, that's not the only reason why you would perhaps run and start your own business, because you may be a social entrepreneur, as we've spoken about, whereby you could earn a living from what you love doing and do some good for a, a community group that's uh, important to you. A social enterprise of many descriptions is, is hugely and growing across the UK. Equally, we have some business owners where they're looking to put something in place for their children. You know, it's a legacy thing. They would like 10, 15 years down the line for their children to perhaps have something to, to take on. And equally, we have some business owners where they're looking to work really, really hard right now 
build the business to a certain situation and then work less in five years' time because they perhaps anticipate that children or grandchildren or whatever may be on the scene. So again, all of that is possible. What is dear to you? What is the thing that you are driving for? I mentioned earlier um, the, the statistics around the number of businesses that don't quite get it to uh, year three. And if you take nothing from my session today, other than this following statement, I'll be a happy bunny. Okay? If you've got an idea that you are thinking about launching, then please fall in love with your customer's problem, not your solution to it. So fall in love with your customer's problem, not your solution to it. Quite often, because we don't have to ask for anyone's permission, quite often because it's kind of a dream we've had, we've almost built a look as to what that business is going to be when it launches. And if that's only sort of what uh, seems sensible in our own minds, actually how relevant is it to the market, how relevant is it to our customers, is not necessarily going to be a working one. So at every point along your journey, ask yourself that question. Is it the customer that's validating what I'm about to do, or is it my interpretation of what I think should be launched?